بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم وأزواجه أمهاتهم وأولو الأرحام بعضهم أولى ببعض في كتاب الله من المؤمنين والمهاجرين إلا أن تفعلوا إلا أن تفعلوا إلى أوليائكم معروفا كان ذلك في الكتاب مسطورا صدق الله العظيم as we were talking about the signs of iman things by which we can recognize that there is iman there is strong faith in our hearts and one of these very important signs and it has to be something that is always remembered on top of our list and that is love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we all understand and recognize that love for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a requirement of iman if we understand the value of our belief of our iman that we have and recognize that we have it only through rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's effort and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the right person if we look at his efforts if we look at his sacrifices if we look at his ibadah at his humbleness and the way he lived his life what he got for himself and what he gave us you won't find any other person in the history of the world that would be able to do what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did when we look at the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is full of sacrifices sacrifice not for his family not just for his companions for every believer that was to come in his ummah till the day of qiyamah it is a fact that we none of us we can never cry for ourselves as much as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried for us 
In spite of seeing the difficulties on our ways, we cannot make as much dua for ourselves as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made for us. The way he begged Allah for us, the way he always worried about us. You know, parents, they don't start worrying about children after having the children and after the children are grown up. We don't start collecting and saving money for our children's education after they get to the age of university, of going to the college and university. We start planning much ahead of that according to our business, according to where we live, our homes, accommodation, their education. We start planning for all of that much ahead of time. But we only plan for our children. As far as their children are concerned, they will plan for their children. We don't keep all of our savings for our grandchildren's education. That's, they're going to take care of it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he planned for us 1400 years ago. It is a fact. Look into the hadith. As if he was looking at our time here and seeing what we may be going through and preparing the path for us and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us and getting everything that would make our life easy and will make our life as smooth as possible, make our way to Jannah as easy as possible. And he made sure he will get us all of those things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's up during the night time. Making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is he praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya Allah, my worry is about those who would come after me. They haven't seen me. And therefore, Ya Allah, they don't know enough about me. How would their iman be saved and protected? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam right there to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you like to have? Ya Rasulullah, my worry is my ummah that would come later on. How would they be saved from the adab of the akhirah, from the difficulties of qabr? How would I make things easy for them? So that they practice less and they will get higher ranks in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two choices. Muhammad, you choose. Choose what you like. Either two-thirds of their ummah of your ummah will be guaranteed to go to Jannah. Or I will give you the shafa'ah. And you intercede on behalf of whoever you like. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I choose the shafa'ah. And the ayah was revealed. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى O Muhammad, Allah will give you enough. Allah will give you enough that you would be happy. Don't cry. Don't cry, ya Muhammad. Don't stress yourself out at this time. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى Don't stress yourself. We'll make you happy. And the ayah is revealed. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Soon Allah guarantees you. He will give you enough that you, O Muhammad, will, see, will say, I'm happy now. And right there as he received this ayah of Surah Al-Duha, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as long as anyone who believed in me is in Jahannam, I will not be pleased and satisfied. Ya Allah, so if you want me to be happy, that will be only once all of my ummah is out of Jahannam. Imagine Allah will give us something. Will tell us, I'll give you something that you would be happy. What is it that you like to have? Today, 
If one of us will have that option, all of a sudden you see in your dream, you wake up and you hear sounds telling you that we are ready to give you something that you would be happy with it. Tell me, what is it that you want? What is it that me and you would ask? If we really look at ourselves, what is it that we would ask for? My business, my family, my children. What is it that we would ask for? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, what I will ask you, Ya Allah, is to save all of my ummah from Jahannam. This is what I ask for, Ya Allah. This is his love for his ummah. This is his concern for his ummah. In fact, one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in about the previous nations and how they had long lives. Some of them lived for thousand years, some for five hundred years. And then many of them used their lives in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he's talking, he started crying. Right there, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cries, right there, malaika talk to Allah and they try to get permission to come and comfort Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It shakes the heavens. The cry of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shakes the heavens. Jibreel alayhi salam comes, what makes you cry, O Muhammad? He said, as I was talking to them, and I remembered those people doing so much of ibadah, and my ummah, because of not having such a long life, they won't be able to acquire as much reward of ibadah as those people did. And we know that is the time when Surah Al-Qadr was revealed. Laylatul Qadri Khairum min Alfi Shahr. O Muhammad, we will give your ummah a night in a year. Every year, we will give them a night. Just in one night, they will get the reward of over 83 years. In one night. More than thousand months. How much more? Allah didn't set a limit. That's, that depends on our sincerity and our, our sacrifice, our effort, how much effort we put in it. So he's always concerned about his ummah. And therefore, he tells us, with all this love that I have given you, I expect a love back from you. This is all. I expect you in return for my love for you, for my concern for you, that you love me too. This is what he wants from us. And a person who would do not 10%, not even 1%, person, 0.1% person of what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did for us, we, would, we are bound to love that person. A person who helps you in all of your situations. A person who you know that is there for you whenever you need him. A person who takes care of you at every difficult situation. When you have a happy occasion, he's always there for you to support you. How much you would love that person and care for that person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cared for us at that time. And he would care about us in our qabr. And he tells us, promises us on the day of Qiyamah, I will not cross the bridge until I make sure that you have crossed the bridge. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a very lengthy hadith, part of the hadith is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place the couches for anbiya and will ask all the anbiya to sit. So anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam will take their positions. I will still be standing. Allah will say, sit O Muhammad. I will say, no ya Allah, I'm not ready to sit yet. Imagine, with little crowd that we are in, and you see a place, you see an empty seat, someone moves, we quickly like to go and take, grab the seat. How long am I going to be standing for? I'm tired, I need to sit. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is assigning him a place of honor. The best seat is being assigned for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Muhammad, go and sit over there. He says, no ya Allah, I'm not ready to sit. Why, O oh Muhammad, how come you don't want to sit? 
there is a place for all the Anbiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, he tells, said to Sahaba, the reason I won't sit, because my fear would be, after sitting, Allah will say, now all of those Anbiya that are sitting there, you make your way to Jannah. And I don't want to make my way, my way to Jannah until the hisab of each and every follower of mine is done. So that I be standing there and I wait for them that they make their way to Jannah because I want to make sure none of them get stuck. If any difficulty, I can do the shafa'ah for them. This is what shafa'ah means. When he chose the shafa'ah, this is what shafa'ah means. That I will wait for you. I will intercede on your behalf. You know the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Amazing hadith. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shafa'ati li ahli al-kaba'iri min ummati. My main intercession will be for those who have committed major sins. I would say, you know, don't tell this to anyone. People who are committing major sins always tell them, no, you're doomed, you're going to Jahannam, you're going to hellfire, there is no way for you. And he's saying, if you did commit that mistake, you made a mistake. As long as you did the tawbah, I'll wait for you and I'll make sure I intercede on your behalf. Subhanallah. Look at his love. Who hates the sins more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did? And then he's saying, Kabair, those who committed major sins, those are the ones that I will look for them to intercede on their behalf. As long as they turned back and they repented to Allah. With all of this love, of course, he deserves our love. And therefore, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, a hadith that every Muslim child should memorize and should remember at all times and should be reminded of all the times. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. No one can be a true believer till he loves me more than his parents, his children, and everyone else. It's a hadith that at least if we don't, we are not in the habit of memorizing the hadith, at least we should memorize this hadith. Hopefully on the day of Qiyamah we can say, Allah, I know one hadith by heart. And I can say it, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين. And I did love my Prophet more than everyone else in the world. In reality, even a normal believer has his iman in his heart, stronger his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam generally is stronger than his love for his family. This normal situation of the people of iman. Many times we don't see it and we feel I love my family, my children more. In reality, you would know it. God forbid, God forbid, if someone in the family says something about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is inappropriate to be said about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you see how upset you are about it. That shows that your iman, your love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is greater. Alhamdulillah, it is dear. But we need to strengthen that even more. Make it even deeper and stronger. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah narrates in his sahih. On the authority of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who would have three qualities in him, another beautiful hadith, a person who would have three qualities in him or her, that person will get the taste of iman, which means these three qualities will make your iman so strong and healthy that through these qualities you will get the taste of iman. You know, healthy and a strong person will get the taste of everything that he eats. A person who's not feeling well, he's ill, he's sick. When he eats something, he doesn't get the right taste of it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, three things, are, three things are sign of your healthy iman. And you, through that, you will get the taste of the ibadah. You will get the taste of tilawa. You will get the taste of salah. You will get the taste of sadaqah. You will get the taste of your iman. Number one. مَنْ كَانَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا A person who loves, and, who loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone else. 
That's the first quality. A person who loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone else. Number two. وَأَن يُحِبَّ الْمَرْءَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ And you love some people in your life for the sake of Allah only. Which means there are people that you consider them to be the people of Allah. So I love this person only for the sake of Allah. Not because he can do anything for me. Not because I can get anything out of him. I only love him for the sake of Allah because of a good believer and a mu'min he is. وَإِن يُحِبَّ الْمَرْءَ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ Number three, third quality. يَكْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهِ كَمَا يَكْرَهُ أَنْ يُلْقَى فِي النَّارِ And that this person dislikes going back to kufr just as much as he or she dislikes being thrown in fire. Because recognizing kufr is fire of the hereafter. So dislikes going back to kufr and going back to kufr. What does that mean? Going back to any of the a'mal of kufr. This is, this includes all of our traditions that come from back home and they have nothing to do with our deen and iman. Traditions that will take us against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Against the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or in our tradition, we behave this way. We do it this way. We dress this way. Leave your tradition aside. Follow the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the three qualities through which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guarantees you have them. You will get the taste of iman. How do we develop the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and getting stronger in us? Make sure that this love will keep on getting stronger and stronger day by day until we go and meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because as we are placed in our qabr, one of the questions would be, Ma taqulu fi hadha rajul? What do you say about this man? That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of Qiyamah, we will need to go to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on Hawt Kawthar and we will need to go to him for Shafa'ah. How do we develop that love? that we can be connected with him. Inshallah, we'll talk about it some other time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the least I can end with this beautiful reminder that in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Making the habit of always, always Keep on sending salat and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not a single day of our life would go by and we haven't designated a time when we would sit and send some salat and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي مرة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة وقال الله جل وعلا في كتابه العزيز النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم وأزواجه أمهاتهم وأولو الأرحام بعضهم أولى ببعض في كتاب الله من المؤمنين والمهاجرين إلا أن تفعلوا إلى أوليائكم معروفا كان ذلك في الكتاب مسطورا بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم